Family Life live stream. We don't do this very often and it's not a trick or treat thing. It's actually no tricks, no treats, just hanging out with us here on the ranch and getting to know you guys. Now, a lot of people may not know that over the last month or so, we've had about 10,000 new subscribers to Our Wyoming Life who have never been to a live stream. So we thought we would take a little bit of a little bit of a break, a week off of the weekly blog, which was very nice. Thank you very much for that. And come and join you on Sunday with a special live stream where we get a chance to kind of go around and take a look. You guys can ask us anything. Um, we're gonna catch up with Jeff. We're gonna find Aaron. We're gonna meet some of the new animals around the ranch and kind of give you guys a look around and, and see uh, you know, what we do here on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you're new. So thank you very much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them out there. Now I will warn you, that um, Erin is actually uh, in town right now. She, she ran to the grocery store really quick because we were out of something or other. So she ran to the grocery store, she will be back, and then she's gonna jump on the computer so that she can answer questions uh, that I can't see. I'm working off of my phone, so it's kind of a small screen that we're gonna try to, uh, try to do this with. So behind me is the Our Wyoming Life uh, license plate wall, which uh, gained notoriety probably two or three years ago when we started it. It actually started with one license plate, this one right there. That's from Ivan and Uliana, uh, who are over and they dropped off one license plate for us. They said, can you put it on your wall? And I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to put a license plate on my wall, but I did. And uh, then they just kind of started flowing in. I am proud to say that now we have um, all 50 states on the wall, along with quite a few countries. So uh, we are still looking for license plates. We're gonna keep on going. It's, it's actually really helpful for me uh, because we have uh, a chance, every time I walk through the shop, I have a chance to look up and, and see uh, basically subscribers that are that are watching me do what I do. A lot of people write their stories on the back, at least they sign their names, which is kind of nice. I figure in a few years, a few hundred years, whenever it comes down, which everything eventually does, somebody will have a nice time, um, you know, reading the back of them. So there we go. All righty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else do we got going on that we're going to talk to you guys about? We have some new animals on the ranch we're going to be going and visiting. Uh, we've gotten, if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram or even Aaron on TikTok, uh, you've seen that we have new pigs on the ranch along with a new goat that, uh, that we're going to be uh, uh, introducing to you as well today and a funny story behind how that goat ended up on the ranch. So if you don't follow Aaron on TikTok, go over and do that. Um, also follow us on Facebook and Instagram because it does help us out and helps us get the word out there. Because if you are new here, uh, it may seem like we're just showing you guys the ins and outs of a ranch in Northeast Wyoming. But in all reality, just like everything in the world, there is a hidden agenda to that. And our agenda is that uh, we want to be able to show people where their food comes from. People that live in cities, people that have really no clue uh, the difference between a bull and a steer or a cow and a heifer. Um, we want to be able to not only show people where their food comes from, but make people feel closer to their food and also closer to the families that provide that food for America and the rest of the world. So that's our hidden agenda. You guys got it. It's right out there. Feel free to unsubscribe now if you're not down with the hidden agenda thing. But uh, we do uh, bring you along with us as we, uh, we do chores. We, uh, we manage animals, calving. Um, we've got preg checking coming up. We've got all kinds of cool stuff on the way. And we're more than happy to, uh, to be able to share all of that uh, with you guys um, when, we, when we can do that. So uh, some other things coming up, and I've seen a few comments pop up about it already, is the fact that we do allow people to take home a piece of the ranch. You can do that online on our website, ourwarmandlife.com. Not only can you watch webcams of the ranch there, you can watch the pasture cam, you can watch the cows, you can even watch the goats. You can also order beef jerky on the website now, and we are working on being able to ship beef probably uh, within, uh, I'm guessing within the next few weeks. We've got uh, some better shipping options on the way as far as packaging going. Um, right now, the big problem right now is dry ice and, uh, and being able to keep dry ice in stock. Uh, there's actually a dry ice shortage. The reason behind that is because dry ice is a, is a byproduct of the fertilizer manufacturing uh, industry and they are slowed way down because of trucking. So uh, all kinds of uh, interesting ways, things that tie together. So. We are in the process of getting that done, but we had to kind of upgrade our, our packaging just in case we have to go with ice. If we can't get dry ice, we have to be able to get it to folks without it being, you know, too thawed. So anyway, that's how all that's going. Uh, you can still order beef jerky on the website, rwarminglife.com. And then of course, like I said, beef jerky and or, uh, meat, uh, beef, pork, all that kind of good stuff is coming up uh, just around the bend. We are going to 
Uh, introduce it to our Patreon supporters. So if you're a Patreon supporter, be sure to uh, uh, follow along there and we will be uh, letting you guys uh, order first. Then we'll be rolling it out to our newsletter and our newsletter comes afterwards. Uh, if you go to our website, you get a chance to sign up for our newsletter there and, uh, and then we'll roll it out to the rest of the channel. That's kind of like, a, a, what do they call those, soft openings so that we can make sure that everything's working uh, all right and we don't, we don't get uh, 200,000 people trying to order um, hamburger on one day, which would not be fun at all. So, uh, oh, the other thing too is that we can't ship outside of the lower 48, uh, or actually we can't ship outside the U.S., but for the beef sales, beef and pork, we can only ship to the lower 48. Um, unfortunately, that's just because uh, we haven't figured out a way to keep it frozen long enough to get it to Alaska or Hawaii. Uh, you can still order beef jerky though, uh, as long as you're within the United States, and that's because of USDA processing. It's all USDA inspected, therefore we can't ship it outside the U.S. without getting it inspected in your country, and that is a uh, giant uh, pain in, in the butt. So anyway, I'm gonna take you guys for a little stroll here. We, I'm just gonna take you off your tripod. There you go. Uh, there's the license plate wall in case you haven't seen it. Give you a quick look around the shop here. Um, the, uh, the shop area is uh, where a lot of the work is done, especially coming up in the, in the winter here where you know, we're gonna be probably locked in the shop at least part of the time. So um, I'm hoping Aaron kind of can clean some of this stuff out, but this is a lot of stuff that's coming out of the garden still. A lot of cabbage here. We've got some tomatoes, uh, onions back there. Uh, so all this stuff is still coming out of the garden. So uh, this is just kind of a, a staging area for Aaron. She's also got her, her sink and washing stations and all that kind of stuff happening. We got some shelves here from our local uh, Kmart that went out of business and uh, trying to figure out what to do with those. And of course our feeding tractor over here. This is our John Deere 6420. This is the one that you saw in the video, has the uh, GPS stuff up there. And uh, this is the one that can drive itself and knows how to drive to the hay yard. Woo! Even though it kind of spooks you a little bit because I'm not used to having vehicles that, uh, that drive themselves right now. Um, what is in the high tunnel? There's a question from Brian. Uh, right now in the high tunnel, still tomatoes, still cucumbers. We've had a really weird season and it hasn't, uh, it hasn't really frozen really hard yet. So we've got uh, cucumbers, peppers, and tomatoes in the high tunnel, and the one high tunnel, and the other one is mostly winter crops that Aaron planted already uh, here a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago. Uh, in there is the stuff like kale and, and uh, spinach and all that kind of good stuff to, uh, to keep things going throughout the winter. So we're stepping outside. There's Jeff's pickup and his camper right back there, but I'll, I'll let you in on a secret. He's actually been staying in the Airbnb, which is located right there, that white building, that white house. Uh, he's been staying in the Airbnb rather than freezing his butt off in his camper, which is totally fine with us. Our cows are right out there. You can see them kind of scattered throughout there. And if you watch the webcam, you can see them as well. We're strolling around the shop. I don't know where Jeff is at. We're gonna try to find Jeff. Oh, there's Jeff. He's wandering out. Everybody say hi to Jeff. Are you Colorado Avalanche fans? I actually am. I lived in Denver for quite a while. So here's Jeff. Howdy. What are you up to? Nothing. <laughs> Just finished off loading a truckload of hay and now trying to get warm again. I know. I was kind of hoping we might be able to catch you unloading, but you were too fast. Oh, you should have told me. I, I know. Slowed down. I know. I kind of, I was like, oh, maybe we'll catch him unloading. And then I came back out and, and there you were, you were done. So um, lots of highs for you. So nice hat. I like your hat. That's it. It's clean. Did you go steal it from the farm store? No, no. no. <laughs> it's clean. You don't see many clean hats around here. <laughs> no, this is actually somebody else's. It's Loretta's. <laughs> oh, it's Loretta's. <laughs> so that's why it's clean. Yeah. That makes sense. That's makes sense. Uh, somebody asked uh, Jeff, I, I, I kind of spilled the beans. I said you were staying in the Airbnb. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's better than staying in the camper. Well, it's bigger. Yeah. You got TV. I do have TV. You have yeah. a shower. Well, and a bathtub if you wanted to take a bath. Yeah. Yeah. A little bubble bath going on there. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. You can do that. Whatever you do over there, man, is your own thing. I don't care. We're not, uh, we're not judging. I'm trying to read comments as we go. I this is, you can that. see how big of a pain in the butt this is. Yeah. I'd have to have two pair of glasses on to do it. I almost think we should have two phones going, but, uh, uh, what's the difference between beef sticks and beef jerky? The pictures look the same. Uh, beef sticks are actually extruded. So think of beef sticks as like a grind that's then extruded and then dried. So it's a flat, uniform, one inch stick. Uh, beef jerky is actually muscle that's torn or, or cut off the, the meat and then dried that way. So uh, the, uh, the beef jerky is a little tougher and uh, sticks are a little 
more tender, I guess. You've had both, haven't you? Not recently. Not recently. Neither have I, actually. I should. In the past, I have. I should. uh, We should go up and uh, visit our packing area. I've had a few uh, email requests for that. We'll do that today too. All right. um, Hey, there's Sam saying hi, and a lot of emojis. (laughs) You're gonna get a just a lot of hi, Jeff. How do you how do you respond? Just hi, 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 hi. Hi. Hello. How you doing? Uh, Tell Jeff the San Francisco 49ers won. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I don't do sports, so. That's good, I guess. I guess people ask me all the time, you know, like, what sports teams do you follow? Honestly, I don't have time, really, to tell you the truth. The three kids, wife, nonprofit, ranch, business, managing you. Like, I mean, it's, it's a full-time <laughs> job to try to keep track of all this crap. Yeah. And uh, following around some guy in tights is not really uh, my idea of, of spending a whole lot of good time. But yeah, I don't support their, uh, I can't remember what I call them now, prima donnas. Yeah, that happens, too. I, all right, from uh, North Wales, UK, I was brought up with farming, used to do milking. I'm glad we don't have to milk. I know how cows suffer and in the slaughterhouse. I am glad I am a vegan now. Well, I'm glad you're here, Susan. I appreciate it. Um, I'm glad you're here. I don't, I don't care if you're a vegan or a, a, a meat eater or you only eat dirt. That's fine with me. It's all, it's all part of farming. All right, so we are heading back. Let's go back. You want to go back and see some goats? Sure. You want to come with us? You don't have to if you don't want to. I've got nothing else to do, and if they want to ask questions, I should be around to answer them. If you have the answer, feel free. (laughs) Right here, we've got a stack of hay. This is uh, kind of a useless stack. Not useless. I can't say that. This is the kids. uh, This is our playground. Uh, We set this up, and the cats, apparently... Uh, we set this up so that the kids can have somewhere to come out and play and climb and, and do all that stuff. Sitting over here, there's the Mac. Right now it's got a flatbed on it because we were using it to move some hay around. Took off the water tanks. Uh, no more water. No more hauling water. No more hauling water. Thankfully. Oh, that, was, that had to be tough. I enjoyed it. You like driving the Mac. Dusty. No, it was No dusty. AC. Just, just not... Uh, not my idea of fun. We're, uh, we're strolling up over here by the corrals. Uh, so there's Blonde Cow right over there. We'll come back and, and say hi to her. Thank you, Matt, for being here. Matt is actually uh, one of our moderators, has been for years, uh, one of my really good friends. And I, I believe that he's uh, moderating from the back of a, a car right now heading down the interstate. So that's dedication. So anybody here, this is their uh, very, I know this isn't Brian's first, uh, um, <laughs> for his first uh, live stream, but anybody here, this is your first live stream. Be sure to, to say hi, not only to us, but to everybody here. We kind of feel like a, a small family sometimes. Speaking of families, these are the geese. They're the, uh, did you ever watch uh, West Side Story? Oh, that's what they remind me of. They're like the gangs in West Side Story. <laughs> we got this gang. And then their rival gang right over here. With the So these are all ducks, except for the one trader there. There's a goose trader. And then the geese over here. Nobody tell Aaron that there's chickens in the garden. All right. Okay, you guys can go away. <laughs> Not you guys, I was talking to the geese. All right, we're stepping in here. Hopefully the geese will go away and leave us alone. We're stepping here into the goat area. Ah, hi goats. Hi guys. Tell the geese to go somewhere else. Hi. Hi. <laughs> if you watch here, if you go to the website, you could actually watch this camera, which is sitting right up in this corner, uh, which is always on. And uh, usually, unless the kids are over here, I'll turn it off if the kids come over. But uh, get to hang out with the goats yourself. And I'm going to introduce you to all the goats, and then that way you know who you're hanging out with. So, over here with Jeff. Who do you got, Jeff? This is Fancy. And Waffle is the white one. This is the newest one that we didn't know we were getting until you went to get pigs. I went to get pigs. I got Yoda. That's Yoda. Oh, hey. <laughs> and, this is, and this is Jack down here, our original. Hey. And then Cirella hanging out over here on the uh, on the hay bale there. 
<laughs> All right, so Yoda's story, if you haven't been following on Instagram or Facebook, uh, Yoda is an eight-year-old goat. I went, hi, hi. I went to pick up pigs and uh, ended up with Yoda. They were getting rid of their goats, uh, the folks that we normally get pigs from, and they asked uh, if we would take Yoda and give her a good home. So we decided to do that. She's pregnant. She's due in March. So we're going to have some baby goats running around, um, which you can never go wrong with baby animals anyway. So at least on the internet. So, yeah. Huh. The rest of these guys, uh, they're dwarf. Are they Nigerian or dwarf? I can't remember. They're dwarf goats. This is, this is fancy. <laughs> And then, of course, uh, Jack there is a fainting goat. And he started fainting, but we really haven't been able to get it on film yet or on camera. He's fainted a couple times, but he's pretty uh, shy about it. Shush! Geese, go away! Oh, my gosh, they're so loud. Jeff's making out with the goats. Yeah, you're a good goat. Good goat. All right, we're going to sneak out of here. We might come back and see these guys again, but the geese are driving me crazy. So <laughs> this is the trick of the day, getting out of the, getting out of the goat pen. The goats actually live in our chicken house, which is right here. They have their own separate room in the chicken house, so... Back here are all the chickens, not all of them, but some of them. They're kind of scattered all over the place. We have free range chickens, so there's chickens scattered throughout the alleys there. And of course, the goats have their own room. See, now they get out of sight of the geese, they shut up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, so if you have any questions about the goats, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, you're more than, uh, what was your first job? Oddly, in, well, my first job uh, was at a KFC restaurant. Was that your first that job was too? was my first job. So you had two, two for one there, KFC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we both work with chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Let's answer a few questions. We'll hang out back here. It's a nice day. Uh, what, 30, 30 some degrees? Yeah, it's about 36-ish. Yeah. Very nice. How much for a goat? One of our goats or just to buy a goat? Because <laughs> I don't know what Aaron paid for. The miniature goats were like a couple hundred bucks a piece, if I remember right. I don't know. Something like that. I've never bought one, so. Yep. Yep. And yeah, Wendy said eight, eight years is the long end for a goat. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're letting her live. You know, obviously, she'll get to finish up here at the ranch probably, yeah. more than likely. So that's where a lot of people come. There are a lot of goats, up. too. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, a lot of, I'm about a lot to of goats. I'm finish up at the ranch. I'm on my way out. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. All right, feel free to throw up any questions, guys. If you guys got them, be sure to hit that like button. Also, that uh, allows more people to come on in and hang out with us. Are you near Cody? It's low 50s and rain here. Uh, well, if you're in Cody... We're on the other side of the state, so a little cooler over here, but no rain. Some cloudy skies. Matt worked at a shoe store. <laughs> uh, let's see. L&R Farms, our homestead. Well, what was that? L&R Farms, the homestead in Tucson, Arizona. I got friends in Tucson. Talked earlier about that hidden agenda that we actually do play into that also. There's animals. So being able to show them goats, having petting goats or petting zoo animals, that type of stuff, uh, does bring people closer to where their food comes from and, and gives them an excuse to come and listen to me babble on for about a half an hour or so. So yeah. kind of keeps them, keeps them entertained while I talk in their ear and whisper sweet nothings. <laughs> my agenda. <laughs> my agenda. Uh, let's see. My first job was dishwasher at Sirloin Stockade. You ever heard of that? I have. Have you really? I have. It's a uh, Midwest to South, I think. Okay. It's not. It doesn't. I don't think there are any more, but I'm not sure. I have no idea. I have no idea. Apparently, we're interrupting some football games because there's a lot of football updates happening. Oh, it is Sunday. Yeah, it is Sunday. Yeah, it's also Halloween. In case nobody noticed or happened to look out the window and think that that the you know the apocalypse had happened when they <laughs> see a bunch of ghosts walking around. Uh, we're actually going to be taking the kids uh, trick or treating in town. We don't do a lot of trick-or-treating out here. See? <laughs> Go away. Do you got a muzzle for those things? Maybe a shot collar? <laughs> uh, we don't do a lot of trick-or-treating here on the ranch. We Basically, we go to Jeff's house, 
some trick or treat over there, I guess. But uh, uh, we're going to take the kids to town here in a few and uh, go do some trick or treating and uh, see how that goes. It's not as cold as I thought it was going to be for trick or treating, so that's good. Yeah. Because it was, it snowed last night. A little bit. Yeah. We got a dusting last night and we're supposed to get some in a couple days. The next few days are going to be, we'll be lucky to get above freezing. Really? Oh. Yeah, so. I don't know. You know, do you look at the weather every day? Not anymore. No, neither do I. I just kind of, you know, it is what it is. But I guess if we have something coming up, um, like we have preg checking coming up, and that's where we're going to bring in all the cows. We're going to see who's pregnant and who's not. That day, I'll check to see what the weather's going to be like. Yeah. But there's not much we can really do about it. So it's not like we can postpone it. The weather's going to be the weather. Exactly. So we're heading back by the corrals here. So in here, in these corrals, I guess I can do this really quick. Uh, we've got a few heifers that are in here, three or four heifers. That is showtime. He's getting nice and big. Blonde cows hanging out back there. Those are not cows, those are chickens. We're not raising miniature cows yet. Dwarf cows. <laughs> Another thing that surprises people sometimes, and we've actually had people on the tour ask me why the roaster, rooster crows throughout the day. Doesn't he know it's not morning anymore? And uh, roosters crow whenever they want. They don't just crow in the morning. Here are some pigs. Baby pigs. Hey piggies, you wanna feed the pigs? Jeff is gonna head over this way. He's gonna grab a bucket of food. These pigs arrived here on the ranch. Sorry about that. I forgot, gosh, everything's so loud here. I forgot when I walk back that way, I'm gonna lose you. So I gotta kind of hang out over here. Uh, but these pigs arrived on the ranch a few days ago. They are still um, acclimating, I guess you could say. And they're still escaping whenever they can. So this morning we had one pig out. Yesterday we had two pigs out and uh, we've been barricading and, and figuring out where they're sneaking out. So Jeff is over here feeding them. I lose signal back here. Uh, I think I lost him for a little bit, but we're back now, I hope. <laughs> uh, these pigs are all about 60 pounds. So I don't know how old they are, a month or two old, I guess. And uh, they will stay here on the ranch for about six months and they will get up to about 250 pounds before we uh, send them off to freezer camp. So. All right, we are. Let's go in here. Let's uh, let's cut through the barn here. Well, this is a portion of our barn. This is what is considered the sale barn, and uh, I always like coming in here and showing people this because there's a lot of history uh, right here in this room. Even though you would never know it to walk in, uh, even the barn down below, which we can't go into because I'll lose you guys. Um, I do need a pig cam. I need more. I need more bandwidth. Is what I need. Um, so I get more cameras. So this room is the sale barn. In fact, you can see some some stuff up there about Herefords. Um, there's some more back here behind me, Barkley Herefords. Um, this was uh, directly to either other producers or uh, families and stuff like that for for slaughter. So in this area, and I'm going to try to show you this. This cat's been following us the whole time. Um, this area has concrete that runs through it. So everywhere there's not concrete, which you can see all the way down here and along this tractor, everywhere that there's not concrete, there is actually, there was bleachers that sat in here. Now this area where these guys, where these tractors are, was actually all fenced in and that was the sale rent. So they would bring cattle in here and they would sell them directly to the highest bidder. Um, which is probably a great way to do it. From 1930-something, 30 35, I think, until about the mid-90s, this was an operating sale barn. Here's a few pictures. I don't know if you're going to be able to see these very well. But um, there's the sale barn. You can see all the bleachers. That's the sale ring that I was talking about. So this sat right there where those tractors are at. Some pictures outside during sale day and the holding corrals there. So some cool history here in the barn. 
that a lot of people get to get to see. Oh, you're still here. Hi, Jay. How are you? Uh, JB Weld asked, does Wyoming have pumpkin patches? I'm guessing when you say pumpkin patches, you probably think um, in here became more of a storage area. So you can see our baler is parked in here. Um, tractors, that's a 4055. This is a 6410 tractor. Any good tractor is one that starts. That's kind of how I feel about it. Everybody's like, oh, you need to have a green tractor, a red tractor, a purple tractor, blue, white. If it start, if I turn the key and it goes broom, I'm, a, I'm pretty dang happy. That's a good uh, tractor. That's a good tractor, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Uh, the, the shop here is, is actually uh, tin. So getting internet in and out of here is sometimes a little bit of a trick. Plus I'm connected to Wi-Fi and I'm not sure why I didn't disconnect that before I started because now I'm tethered to the house. So, all right, let's answer a few more questions. We're about a half an hour into this thing and uh, I've got a couple more things that we could probably show you and then, uh, and then we'll cut you guys loose for the day. But um, we definitely wanted to be able to, uh, to, first of all, bring you guys a video on Sunday because we always promise to do that. Can you grab the, the, the dolly thing? And we're just gonna kick back here for a little bit and, and uh, shoot the breeze with these guys. Jeff, you're the employee of the decade. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I should, uh, I should actually put my picture in that employee of the month one of these days, maybe. I'm gonna clamp you guys back down here so that Jeff and I can talk to you hands-free here in front of the tractor. Look at that, look at that background, that's beautiful. <laughs> Can't read anything without getting really close up here, but. Uh, when do you winterize the water systems? We're actually done with that at this point. Uh, we went through and did all that, what? In a couple of weeks before that first big storm. Yeah, before that first big storm. Uh, we were a little worried about how cold it was gonna get. We went through and blew out all of our water lines, all the sprinklers. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of our stuff, honestly, we have uh, we have hydrants, so we just have to go turn it off. The hydrant actually turns off six feet below ground, so we don't have to. Uh, we don't have to mess around with that, so works out pretty well. But all the above ground lines need to be blown out, hoses need to be picked up, um, a little we, bit of everything. We did that, yeah, so same day. So. Wells turned off that we don't need, yeah, yeah, very simple, not, not, not too bad actually. Um, do people volunteer on the ranch? Well, Jeff volunteers, <laughs> unfortunately, we only need uh, we only need so many volunteers. That's, I mean. If, if everybody that wanted to come and work on the ranch came and worked on the ranch, we would have nothing to do. Yeah. Like, what would we do? We'd have to make work. I know, right? Hey, we're going to build a... I don't know what we'd build. <laughs> we can't, afford, can't afford gonna, any wood to build anything. We're going to so, dig yeah. a hole and fill it back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go dig a hole. We're going to have hole digging class today. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Nubians Mini. Is that what they are? Mini Nubians? I think, I think that's, that's correct. Are. Yeah. I, you know what? I hate this because I have to put my finger in front of the thing to be able to see the, <laughs> see the comments. Uh, Jeff, do you ever sleep? Oh, yeah. Very well, actually. I, I You'd be don't... surprised how much hard work helps you sleep. You don't sleep really good. but Well, I, I get four hours a night. Yeah. So and it's a good four hours. That's good yeah. for me. <laughs> it's a solid four hours. Everybody's happy. So, um, Foreclosure pending sign in the background. Are you selling? Should I tell the foreclosure <laughs> pending sign uh, sure. deal? So uh, Gilbert, my father-in-law, if, you, if you're new to the channel, I do suggest that you go find a playlist. Um, I think it's called, if this is your first time watching or if you're new here or something like that, uh, there's about four or five videos in that playlist that really give you the background of the ranch. Don't let me forget about that super chat. But actually, let's do that super chat really quick. Yep. One. Ah, wrong button. $40 super chat, trick or treat and gas money. Nice. We just buy the kids candy and not go. Uh, <laughs> just go to Jeff's house and he'll give you $40 worth of candy. Gas money, was that $50? Because that's what it costs to get to town. No, oh, it doesn't count. It's getting <laughs> close really. though. It's getting close. Uh, the foreclosure pending sign. So um, Gilbert had a weird, Gilbert was my father-in-law. Um, when we came to the ranch, he, he was still running the ranch. Obviously he passed away in 2012. And, uh, but he had an odd sense of humor. So he would hang the foreclosure pending sign out on the fence occasionally and people watch, watch people's reaction and judge people's reaction as they would drive by, they'd stop in, oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, it was kind of very, very uh, uh, weird sense of humor. Yeah. And, and Aaron actually made that sign while she was in college. So that's, uh, that's why, and we found it after Gilbert passed away, uh, we found it in one of the barns and said, you know what, let's, let's, let's hang this darn thing up and, and, uh, and keep it around, so. 
Um, is Jeff staying throughout the winter? Unfortunately, no. Um, Jeff is leaving for the holidays to go back home and spend the holidays with his family. And hopefully, um, if we if we're going to keep his camper. Are you taking the camper? No, I'm not. Okay, so we're going to keep the camper. Keep the camper. And uh, that's your, uh, you're, you're going to be back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your deposit, that's if you it. will. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. It. So, uh, yeah, we're going to keep the camper here. Jeff's going to go home for the holidays and then hopefully come back uh, in the beginning of the year. So I'll be kind of flying solo uh, for a few couple months, maybe, uh, if that. Who knows? Maybe. Depends on how, how long you make it. Last time Jeff went home, he made it for a week. So <laughs> Yeah, seven days. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I got to go. He's actually, he said he was going to the gas station and came here. I don't know, I don't know if he's talking. I'm going to go get some cigarettes. I'll be back. <laughs> and he's gone. Poof. All right. So, yeah, a couple stories there. Uh, what, Je what, Jeff, what did you do uh, before uh, retirement? Well, my biggest career was Continental Airlines. I worked for them for 20 years on the ramp. And what does in, that mean, and on the ramp? Cargo. Loading and unloading down Planes. underneath, uh, unloading, loading and unloading airplanes. Did you ever stay down there and just take a flight somewhere and be like, this plane's going to Aruba. I'm just going to no. climb in with the luggage. No, no, it's not heated down there. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> that probably wouldn't be a good thing. Be digging through people's luggage, trying to cover yourself up in yeah. skimpy little bras and stuff. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> All right. Um, hold on, camper ransom. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, where is back home? San Francisco. No, uh, you. Every time I say San Francisco, you say no, no, no. Well, it's South San Francisco. <laughs> Apparently, there's a difference. It's a different city. It's yeah. 12 miles south of San Francisco. Okay. So, and there's two cities between that and San Francisco. And if you haven't seen some of Jeff's videos, you can actually go back. Uh, Jeff did a video a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago. I can't remember. They all meshed together. Yeah, I don't. Uh, but there is a couple of videos back there where you can find Jeff's backstory and where he came from. You grew up in San Francisco, but you had family who were Okies that, that, that farmed in Oklahoma, and you would go back and visit and yep. find out all you can about Jeff. And, and I think you even find his email in there somewhere. So you can always... You yeah, can always... you announced the email in, I did. in one video. That was fun, too, to <laughs> watch the stuff come in. So. And I've been, I've, I have received some. Thank you for the... The, vid uh, the videos. Are they good? You've never shared any of the emails you've gotten with me, so I don't. Are they good, or are they yeah, like, how the hell do you put up with that Mike guy? No, like, they're all uh, they're all good. Are they good? That makes me feel better. All right. Uh, any plans to sell steak and hamburger via your website? Yes, we are actually working on that as we speak. Um, if you have a shirt to sell, okay. So we do the the daily vlogs where we're filming every single day, and during the summer I would wear a, a shirt from a subscriber. Right. Yeah. Um, can't do that so much in the winter time because uh, I'm always wearing a coat or a sweatshirt. So if you have a sweatshirt you'd like to send, but that's ridiculous. Sweatshirts are ridiculous. Don't send a sweatshirt. They're crazy expensive. Uh, but I got to figure out a new way to do this for the winter time. You have a button. I don't wear a whole lot of yeah, ball caps. Yeah, you don't wear a ball cap. So. Well, I do sometimes, but not all the time. Only when the wind's blowing 40 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I lost my hat the other day. What the heck was I doing? I don't remember, but I walked outside, I had a ball cap on and then gone. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, that one's gone. Couldn't find it either. It's out there somewhere. Huh. All right. Um, let's see. Besides Yellowstone, what spots in the West do you recommend a first time visitor to go see? Well, you can always come visit the farm store. Uh, farm store is open here, right here on the ranch, uh, Wednesday through Friday in the afternoon. So you can stop on by and hang out with Aaron and buy some veggies and all kinds of good stuff. Um, you really haven't had a chance to go sightseeing too much in Wyoming either, have you? No. We went to Devil's Tower. Devil's Tower is kind of cool. It's a big rock. It's a big rock sticking out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. um, Deadwood is is That's fun. South Dakota. That's South Dakota. Yeah. We can't be we can't be pro <laughs> oh, other yeah, tourists no. to other states. Don't go there. <laughs> um, South Dakota's full. Go home. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's in Wyoming because I've only been to the You've rock. been by Independence Rock. Have you been by there oh, yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, have you stopped there? Uh, every time. Yeah, every, Independence every Rock trip. is cool. It's it's on Jeff's way home back to, to San Francisco. S excuse me, South San Francisco. Uh, and uh, it's basically this giant rock that as people were, were coming out west, they were carving their names and initials and all kinds of stuff into it. It's pretty kind of, it's a cool piece of history. Yeah. I've never walked out to the rock. Oh, you haven't? I've looked at it from the rest area. Oh, okay. But it's kind of a long walk. Is it really? I, well, I, I've driven by it. I don't know if I've ever walked up to it either. It's, Honestly. It's, they've got a, a wooden path and, you know, it's information signs all along, but it's just something. Look, it's big. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. The crazy thing about Wyoming that kind of threw me off when I, when I first moved here uh, was that every 
50 miles, there's a sign that's like historic point, pull over. Like, and, and you can, you see something like, here's the yeah. battle of this, or here's, uh, here's where Fort whatever was. And, yeah. and it's everywhere. And I don't know if all states are like that. Cause usually I'm on interstates and in other states. So well, it depends on well, across the North here <clears throat> or Northwest, wherever we are, <laughs> the California trail went through Wyoming. The Oregon trail went through Wyoming. Right. Um, all, a lot of the pioneers mm -hmm. came through Wyoming. And they kept going. Right. Because they, they didn't feel like <laughs> stopping. Uh, and if you're in this area, of course, there's uh, coal mining. Coal mining is huge here in Campbell County, which is where we're at. And uh, you can go on coal, coal, uh, coal mine tours. Uh, did you, get, you haven't had a chance to do that yet, have you? I don't think they, I think they do it in the summertime. Um, but yeah, there, there you can go visit a coal mine. You can sit and watch other people work. Jeff likes to do that. Uh, big trucks and stuff like that and, uh, and check them out also. So there's lots of stuff to do. You just kind of have to, um, you have to dig a little bit and try to find the good stuff because that's how it is mostly in, in uh, well, pretty much anywhere you go. If you want to see the good stuff, you have to find it off the beaten path. Yeah. Yeah, the best stuff is out there. And, of course, pronghorn antelope, they're everywhere. So let's see. I'm going to scroll back, guys, sorry. I spent 37 years in California, now I'm in Illinois. I don't, I don't know if that's any better. That's not a fair trade. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lateral move. Uh, be awesome to see a Jeff sweatshirt living the dream. Huh. You want to design a sweatshirt for yourself? Huh. No. Well, you can come up with an idea. I can I, design it. I don't have ideas. <laughs> yes, you do. You have ideas all the time. Give yourself some credit. Uh, Deadwood, yeah, Bighorn Mountains, all that good stuff. Um, how do you water the cattle in the winter? Well, uh, some, some tanks have uh, heaters that keep them warm. Uh, some tanks we have to break ice and it's just uh, just the way it works. We actually have a new tank uh, that, or not even a tank, it's a new water that we're gonna be installing here in the next couple weeks, hopefully. Uh, that's from Tomcat Manufacturing, which is actually right here in Gillette, a uh, manufacturing company here in Gillette that's created a geothermal uh, tank that we actually can go out and bury and it won't freeze all all winter long. We're gonna be installing that tank here in the next few weeks, and we're also gonna be visiting their manufacturing plant and taking a look and seeing how, how it works and and, uh, and how they build them. So it's kind of a, a cool, you wanna come along for that? If I'm here. Yeah, we'll try. I'll, I, gotta, I gotta get that all set up. So I'm, our, uh, our resident uh, backhoe operator, Gary, uh, hurt his shoulder. So he, we're waiting for him to recover so that he can run a backhoe and, and dig us a nice big, uh, a nice big trench. So um, what do you say to the tank to break the ice? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> 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 I remind me to. I heard a horrible, uh, not a horrible, a funny Halloween joke, but I can't say it on here because there might be kids watching. But I'll tell you later. And if you get our newsletter, maybe I'll put it in that one. <laughs> uh, freeze misers on the water tanks. Yep, we still have the freeze misers. They're on. Um, they're on a couple different water tanks right yep. now, aren't they're they? They're on the one in the corner of the triangle pasture. Yep, that's the main cow tank. So that one has the freeze miser on it right now also. So, yeah, we're definitely, uh, the, the things that we that we show in videos, uh, we're not just, uh, you know, getting paid to use them. A lot of the, I mean, those freeze misers, we found them. Um, I bought them. We tested them. Actually, the company did get a hold of me after that, but, you know. They um, work. They work, yeah. And they, they thanked us for showing how they actually work, and they sent me one free one which I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, what about the other 10 tanks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it was cool. They, they seem like really cool people. Freeze misers, uh, they're basically a little thing that goes on your water line that, that keeps it from freezing so that you can keep on flowing. Um, you can always check those out. So, um, beautiful day that you could imagine today in Texas. Oh, I bet. <laughs> uh, from Mike, I have a cold calf. Its mouth is cold, not drinking a bottle. Warm it up. Get it, in a, get it in a bathtub if you don't have anything else to warm it up with. Uh, let's see. Hooray for a ranch hand. Jeff. Jeff is go, isn't going home for the holidays. He's going to the North Pole. Jeff is Santa Claus. That's pretty <laughs> oh, funny. The, yeah, you have to the, put on a little weight. The beard's filling out, though. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to just let the beard go? No. No, you this shave is, it off at a certain this point. This is as good as it gets. Oh, right okay. Here. I guess I never asked you that. You just let her rip. I used to shave once a year, and I usually ended up off. You know, I'd, I'd end up shaving in October and then freeze my face all all winter. <laughs> so I made it a point to leave the beard for the winter. Oh, well, that makes sense. So, yeah. Do you have a beard trimming kit? Oh, yeah. How do you shears. do that? Oh, okay. Just, I don't know. We have to take you down like a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> basically the same thing, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Is Wyoming much colder than Maine, Vermont, or New Hampshire? I honestly have no idea. Uh, I know it gets cold up there. We, uh, we tend to have uh, what are called Chinook winds that come through here. So we'll get snow. We'll just like the other, what, two weeks ago, we got 14 inches of snow. Uh, now there's not a lick of snow on the ground. We had snow this morning. There's not a lick of snow on the ground. Yeah. Uh, but we get warm winds that come in and tend to melt things off. So we'll get cold for a few weeks. We'll get above freezing for a few days and that'll kind of melt everything off. Then it'll get cold again. So it, uh, it's definitely not like uh, back east where you get snow and it stays all, all winter, year, all winter <laughs> long. Yeah, I was gonna say all year long, but yeah. Uh, put Jeff in the squeeze. Yeah, shave you in the squeeze. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I'm scrolling, guys. I'm looking for, for looking for comments here. Um, I don't think I don't think we missed any animals that are out and around. Uh, horses and the steers are across the road on the other side of the highway. Uh, we've got. Five more steers, I think, that we've got to get on grain here pretty quick. Um, they're going to be going in a, in a couple months, so we're going to get those guys on grain. Uh, horses are, are kind of on their winter vacation. Uh, we did have them on this side of the highway for uh, for this for yeah. fall, late late summer into yeah. fall. Uh, we had the horses over here and got them some work and that kind of stuff. But now they're back over across the road and and kind of doing their thing. So, uh, preg checking is coming up uh, middle of November is our plan so we hopefully will be able to bring you guys along for that have a video about that and uh and keep that going like we do every single year um how is bambi and blanca blanca is good we walked by saw her earlier uh she's getting old can't help that but she's doing good i saw bambi this morning when i fed oh did you she was right at the front of the line nice she's doing good that's funny actually you know what why don't you uh i'll answer some more questions well no never mind that's not going to work um, I was going to say go cake the cows, but we can't do that right now. So <laughs> no, that ain't good. No, we can't. Uh, we actually, our, uh, our brand new gator is kind of in the, in the shop right now. It, it needed a new fuel pump. So uh, luckily it's warranty work. So it's, uh, it's kind of out of commission, so we can't go cake right now. Uh, but, oh well, that was a good idea. That was. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. What medicine should we always have on hand in our cabinet for the calves and the cows? You know, that's a good question. Let's go take a look. Why not? We're gonna go over here to our medicine cabinet, see what we've got on hand for the calves and the cows. Um, this is goat dewormer. We've got that ready to go. Excuse my mess, because it is a mess in here. Um, this is the, the shop's unheated, so we're able to keep most of this stuff um, up here right now. Uh, we've got LA 200. We've got Exceed, which is a really good antibiotic. This is for pink eye. We've got a lot of different ointments probiotics for calves, new floor, which is a, uh, uh, for pneumonia, banamine, which is for swelling. We have, uh, some Ultraback 7, afterbirth boluses. We've got, uh, colostrum supplement, lots of scour pills. I've probably got more stuff over here. You can let that go. I've got Oxytocin, I mean, really, honestly, it's what your vet will get, will allow you to keep. Um, I can't open that right now because I don't have enough hands. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the same thing. And I mean, oxytocin is one that we keep around if we have to do any type of uh, um, uh, nerve block on a cow. Uh, sometimes we have to do that. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, let's see. Dumb question probably, but do farms, farm animals need flea medication like cats and dogs? Um, well, honestly, okay, so that's a good question. So we have a thing called ivermectin, which everybody's been hearing about in the news. We haven't been drinking it. We actually give it to our cows. And uh, it is, uh, it gets rid of fleas, mites, um, keeps uh, flies, that kind of stuff. Any internal, um, it usually gets rid of, there's some internal stuff it can get rid of, uh, some worms and stuff like that. So uh, we actually do that. So yeah, we do have to treat them for, you cold? I'm getting there. You're getting cold? All right, we'll get things wrapped up here before too long. Don't stop on my account. Uh, you know. I know where the heater is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you, have you checked your Reddit page? Oh my gosh, I haven't looked at our Reddit page for a long time. Uh, there's actually a subreddit uh, that's our Wyoming. It's Reddit. Somebody might have to put it in. It's Reddit slash r slash r Wyoming life. 
and uh, people can buy. I haven't looked in there for years. I've never looked at Reddit. Really? We actually, uh, our very first video that we put out was posted on Reddit. And that's where we got a lot of our momentum right off the bat was thanks to Reddit. So we actually made a subreddit and then it just kind of died out. Like, you know, people weren't as interested on there. You know, this pretty fast moving community. So they call it the front page of the internet. Oh, is it? Yep. Have you watched Yellowstone, Jeff? Yes, I'm waiting for season four. Is it good? It is very good. I, I haven't watched it. I've been... Uh... I fly my helicopter all the time. I don't need to watch yeah. somebody else fly theirs around. There, for a while, people were saying, oh, you look like that guy on Yellowstone. I had to figure out which guy. Kevin Costner? No. <laughs> the guy that plays no. Lloyd, the, the really old guy. Oh, jeez. I mean, the really old guy, the old hand. That's I apparently... That's who I remind He's not the one that flies the helicopter? No. Who flies the helicopter? Uh, I guess the pilot. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Makes total sense. Um, the Blizzard of 49 always comes up anytime anybody brings up Wyoming. Have you watched the PBS special on the Blizzard of 49? No. It's on It's on YouTube. It's pretty good. It's a it, it, whole thing. Um, Gilbert was actually alive during that time. Uh, they had a blizzard that was out here on Highway 50 where we're at. It was feet deep of snow. Uh, they had to uh, take airplanes and push bales of hay out of the airplanes for the cows. Oh and Gilbert remembers them. They didn't use any equipment to clear snow. They were using dynamite to clear <laughs> snow so that they could get uh, out to farms and ranches and stuff like that. It was crazy. It was crazy. So yeah, be sure to check that out. Um, I have nothing to do with that, but uh, let's see. Do you think, this is a good question from Jared. Do you think you will make videos forever? Or do you, if you know there will ever be an end to this? I answer, I asked this in the best way. Uh, dang it, I lost it. Lo love your videos. Um, it's, it's honestly a good question. I, know, I don't find it, you know, I, I ask a lot of YouTubers when I meet them, like how long do you plan on doing this? Because I kind of want to get an idea for myself. So when I meet other big YouTubers or, or people that are in our same genre, I'll say, you know, like what's your, what's your end game? Like, yeah. is, there, is there a way out of this? Now, I always say, I don't want to be making videos in 10 years. Like, I don't, and at least, like, I don't want to be the grind. Like, I don't want to be, you know, oh, I got to make a video today or, you know. Like, I want to get to the point where I can make a video when I want to make a video. Yeah. Um, right now, unfortunately, YouTube is part of our income stream that's keeping the ranch alive. So it's like, it's like having a regular job. I would like to get to the point where making videos and creative content and stuff like that becomes more of a hobby. And it's more... Um, something that I don't have to sit back and rely on. And that's where a lot, if you're smart, you'll build a business around you too. Whether like for us, it's beef jerky, it's being able to ship beef, um, you know, having people come to the ranch and, and visit, that kind of stuff uh, is what is gonna allow me to be able to have fun making video. Well, I, not that I don't have fun making videos, <laughs> but um, be able to just make videos for fun yeah. at some point in my life or be able to pass it on. I mean, we've talked about uh, maybe our woman life goes on forever and it becomes about, you know, the people that work on the ranch and the people that help, um, or city slickers that come to the ranch and, yeah. and learn how to feed hay. You know, maybe it's that, maybe, maybe it becomes that. Um, we have a, a friend of ours who's really big into YouTube. He's actually a YouTube consultant. And he's always bugging me about once a month, I'll get an email or a text from him and it says, hey, uh, you wanna talk about Wy our Wyoming Life 2.0? And I'm like, nope, <laughs> not yet. We'll get there eventually. He said, well, you know, I've got, I've got some ideas. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> We'll get there. So, yeah. Uh, the guy who plays Lloyd was born in 1952. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm right on his tail. Yeah, there you go. Or, yeah, Mackenzie could take over the channel. Maybe maybe Mackenzie would uh, would be, it could be, you know. Well, she wants to do YouTube, so. She does. That may be the case. Do I want to hand her 200,000 subscribers and go, here you go. Have fun with that. Yeah. Maybe in a few years. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Right now, she her head would explode. Uh, from uh, Mickey. Jeff, how is the cold treating you? It's fine. I'm, it's not your favorite thing in the world. I, no, I don't like cold. Yeah. I just, I never have. But I've lived in the cold. I can deal with the cold. I'm out in the cold. I'm dressed for the cold. That's the big thing. Yeah. I think if you're dressed for it, like today, beautiful. There's really no wind. Yep. It's, it's chilly, but without wind, it's not bad. Now, today, if the wind was blowing 40 miles an hour, it'd be miserable outside. It would. Even at 35 degrees or whatever it is. So it's... it's it's really just kind of being prepared for what you have to do. And there's plenty of days where the wind's blowing, it's nasty outside, I'll go out and feed and I'm done. That's like, it. <laughs> I, I don't even want to go to the shop. I'm not going to walk that 100 
her feet to the shop. Like Minimum chores on yeah, that day. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, we're done. Unless you have something that has to. And those are the days, of course, when you get the phone call, hey, your cows are out <laughs> or the fence is down or there's a sick cow out here or something you got to deal with. Yeah. That always changes your plans. But um, some of those things have to be dealt with. But if there is a choice, sometimes it's like, you know what? We're going we're gonna to do the bare minimum and uh, yeah. catch up on Yellowstone or whatever else you're watching. So, yeah. Um, how do you select your bulls? Uh, we buy our bulls from uh, actually a neighbor of ours up in Montana. Uh, we, our neighbors sometimes live a long ways away. Uh, but uh, we tend to look for low birth weights um, is kind of the first thing we look at. So we want to get a bull that, that has a low birth weight. A lot of that is just kind of hit or miss though sometimes. It's like, you know, yeah, he had low birth weight, but that doesn't mean that he can't have a 120 pound calf come out of him. So it's definitely, uh, but it is nice to, to be able to look at some of those EPDs. Uh, are you going to put Yoda in the barn when she has her kids? I haven't thought that far ahead, but yeah, probably it'll be March. In a stall. Yeah, she'll have to be in the barn. Um, I've seen the video of you roping that calf. Can you explain what was happened to the end of the rope? It looks like you went through the Honda twice. I'm not sure. I'd how have to look at how it. How so, tied it off. Yeah, it was just I tied it off on the four-wheeler. The bad part was, so I was, and you weren't out, you were driving the, the, the tractor down. Sorry, the lights went out behind us. Um, you were driving the tractor down, but when I roped that calf, I had the camera on a clamp, uh, on the, the gooseneck clamp thing on the four-wheeler, and it was staying up pretty good. And, I, and as soon as I went to rope that calf, that camera went <laughs> and fell over. So you're, as I roped the calf, you can actually see n nothing. You can see like the, the four-wheeler. Yeah. yeah. And then, so <laughs> people thought it was like clever editing, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually had, I, I was, I threw the rope, the camera fell, I, I caught the calf, put the camera back up and then boom, I have the calf. So everybody, I got a few emails and they were like, oh wow, nice editing, you know, that you got that calf. On the, you'd be surprised how much stuff when you're filming happens on the first try. Uh, during the, uh, the uh, snowstorm, I had a video where I threw a snowball at the camera and it hit, and it hit yeah. that was my first and shot of somebody that. asked in the comments how many times did you have to throw a snowball Ex yeah exactly no I, I hit it the first time i'm like good i'm done Whew, walk away uh if i would if i wouldn't have hit it i probably would have just said okay well we'll cut that out because that didn't work um we had another one too where somebody uh we were spinning the wheel to come up with our our uh our project and yeah. I spun the wheel and it landed right where I wanted it to land. <laughs> and somebody said, how many times do you have to spin that before you got it to land on gates or whatever we were doing that day? And cause we do kind of cheat a little bit cause we'll, we'll kind of have an idea <laughs> what we're going to do. But um, yeah, it was like, no, it just worked out that way. I've never had to actually cheat with the wheel. It always just kind of seems to work. So I don't know. Dumb luck. Head to the roulette table, man. I should. There's none of those around here though. No. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have your own brand for the cattle? Yeah, all of our cattle are branded with the A Bar brand. It's one of the oldest brands in Wyoming. Uh, what brand coat is Jeff wearing? That's from Charlie. That's a twenty dollars super chat. You better tell. What's your What's your coat here? What's it say? Wrangler. It is a Wrangler coat. That's a Wrangler. It's a nice coat. People think it's Carhartt, but it's not. No, I did see a comment. Somebody said Jeff's going to have to get some Carhartts, and and if we have to, if we have to do that, we'll do it. So this has been a really good coat. I bought it in April last. This past April when I got here, it was so cold, I went to Walmart, and, and it has served me well. There you go. Works for me. Um, let's scroll back here a little bit. We'll answer a few more questions, and then we're going to probably duck out here. i got to take the kids trick-or-treating. Um, how's the GPS working? Honestly, I haven't used it a whole lot since the video. Um, I'm looking forward to using it during, uh, during harrowing. Um, during seeding, if we do any seeding, which I kind of hope we do, but we'll see how that works out. Um, cutting of hay, which I'm really hoping we're going to be able to do next <laughs> yeah. year. Um, during haying, I'll be able to use it also. So the big, the big advantage that I can see to it is the, the fuel savings because you're not going over the same ground over and over again is kind of what I'm thinking. So. I actually had a question about that. Oh, you because did? Because in your video, you had a 10-foot implement. There yeah. was no implement on it. It right. was the width of the, the axle. It was actually the de default implement yeah. that was on it. So, yeah. so I didn't change that. So you've got a 36-foot harrow. Do you put that in and then it... Then it figures out your lines based on that. So yeah. So those lines aren't going to be where they were on that video. No, they're, they're going to be, be wider. farther apart. Right. And then Very cool. the interesting part, and I haven't really farted around, farted around with it too much, <laughs> but um, the, the turnaround too, how, how that works. And because yeah, obviously if you have a harrow or something like that, when you turn around, you're going to be missing spots. So how, how does it pick that up? Um, I'm kind of hoping I can set it so I can drive around the outside of a field and then go in incrementally mm. like a spiral. 
type of thing, maybe. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff with it that honestly, I really haven't messed around with too much. There's so many settings in that thing that it's crazy. So I just wanted to say, hey, how does this thing work? <laughs> and let's see if we can get from A to B. That was my main thing. Like, let's get from A to B and then we'll worry about C and D and E and, and straight lines and curved lines and, yeah. and offset. There's like offset. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff that you gotta mess around. I'm gonna wow. just give you the book and be like, figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, $5 super chat from Evelyn uh, for trick-or-treating. Can I bring my granddaughter to see the goats? We live in Gillette. Uh, feel free, to, if you come out to the farm store, uh, one of us are around, we'll probably, we'll probably be able to, to help you out with that. So farm store is open Wednesday through Friday uh, in the afternoon. So um, let's see, camp dry and spray that coat down. <laughs> camp dry, I've never heard of that. It's a waterproof spray. Oh, okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter if stuff gets wet. It, you hang it up and dry it. It'll yeah, be fine. you wear enough layers. You don't, you know. Yeah, I've I usually have four four layers on. Yeah. So this coat, nobody asked, but I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell them about it <laughs> anyway. Uh, this coat is actually one of those Dewalt heated coats um, that you put a battery, a Dewalt battery in, and it heats the coat. And I hate it because it's too damn hot. <laughs> like you you can't go from one environment to the next without like boiling your skin off. Yeah. So you'll have it on. You jump in the tractor. Four minutes later, it's. I think I'm gonna die because I'm literally like boiling in my skin. So you have to turn it off. Um, but I don't usually. I just use. I like the jacket itself. It's a light jacket. Yeah. I should just give you this jacket and see if you could like you know. Well, the problem with heated jacket is you wear layers, and then you got heat. And if you do any physical that too labor yeah. at all, well, I got to shed something. Well, mm -hmm. the electric one comes off first. Yeah, now I would wet. actually be more happy with like a, a heated hoodie. Yeah. That would be the lower level. That would be your heated level. So you could trip off, yeah, you know. closer to the body. Right. This one, like, if you have it on, and I've even noticed, like, going from um, shade to sunlight, if the sun's shining, you know, in the shade, you're cold. You walk <laughs> in the sunshine, and it's like, oh, I'm really hot now. Yeah. Like, I'm just, yeah, it's crazy. So, not that anybody asked, but I wanted to tell that whole story. Uh, more of Aaron's cooking and baking videos. Feel free to send Aaron an email and get her, uh, get her moving on that. Um, all right, so let's do this. Let's uh, let's wrap things up, but let's go back over the goats. We'll wrap things up over there. Okay. And so that everybody can see the goats. We're going to work our way back that way through the dark shop because our light's turned off. You're okay. You're okay. You don't have to turn them on, Jeff. Now they're staying off. We have a, um, we have a motion sensor on the lights here in the shop, which apparently is just about ready to crap out because yeah. it's, 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 it's not working. <laughs> so... All right, we're heading back through the sale barn where we came and visited earlier to learn more about the sale barn and, and what happened in here uh, from 1935 to the mid-1990s or so, somewhere in there. Oops, sorry, Jeff, I closed you on the wrong side of the door. That's all right. I was pulling that for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're back outside. Pigs are back down that way. We visited them earlier. Block cow and some of the, the heifers here. Hanging out in the corral, blonde, blonde cow's calf, showtime. He's way back there for some weird reason. <coughs> Over here, we've got our bulk feed. Um, one of my projects for this summer or this winter is to actually build a, I want to build a feeder. I want to build a bulk feed bin and I really don't want to buy one. So we're going to figure out how to build one. Um, that'll hold a ton of feed and has a spout of some sort on the bottom so that we can just fill it up with the bag and then be able to go and, and uh, get feed out of it, whether it's chicken feed or pig food or, or even goat food. We're heading back over here to the goats. If you check out our website, ourwarminglife.com, you can uh, click on webcams. One of our webcams, we're getting ready to walk in the view of it here in just a moment, actually watches the goats 24 seven. So you can hang out with them whenever you like. There's actually thing called therapy. And people are, people are watching the goats as part of goat therapy. Yeah. She definitely uh, knows she's the boss. There's Jeff hanging out with the goats. <laughs> yeah, that one's the one that I, I and Yoda. Sorry about the buffering there, guys. Apparently, I walked in the wrong part. Right. 
<laughs> it's goat yoga. All right. Well, guys, we're gonna we're gonna cut you loose. Uh, we're gonna take the kids and head trick or treating. What are you gonna be for Halloween? I think it might be a ranch hand. There you go. That's all we're good at. I'll be one too. How about that? How about you be the boss and I'll be the ranch hand for a day? No. <laughs> I, I got, can't a, I got a stack of bills. Of like, I got a stack of bills for you, <laughs> man. Way too much pressure for me. No doubt. No doubt. Well, guys, um, thank you very much for hanging out with us today. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we, <laughs> please don't end the live stream. My wife is making me muck stalls when it's over. <laughs> I wish I could, but we do need to take the kids, get them to town. Uh, they need candy, right? It's Halloween. Got to have that candy. I'm going to tell you that Halloween joke. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a good one. And uh, we're going to cut you guys loose. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. We do appreciate it. Uh, new video due out on Wednesday uh, right here on Our Warming Life. And if you like the live stream, be sure to go check out Beyond the Ranch. Beyond the Ranch is actually our live stream channel. Uh, that's where we get a chance to hang out with you guys every, well, the first and third Wednesday, Sunday. Jeez, Wednesday. Sunday. First and third Sunday of uh, every single month. We get a chance to hang out with you there. And uh, we do some interesting things there as well. So be sure to subscribe to that channel. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. We do appreciate that. Does help us out as well. And fancy. Keeps fancy in the goat treats. Yes, it does. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks to you to our moderators as well uh, for keeping track of things. William Dunn here along with uh, Matt Fensel. Uh, our other moderators include Zach Hewitt uh, and Lori Habel and Bill the Tractor Man. So thank you guys for hanging out with us and uh, keeping everybody in line and all that good stuff. So we're going to cut out. We'll see you on Wednesday and then, of course, on Sunday for our uh, weekly vlog as well where we're going to have all kinds of new stuff coming up. So we'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. I can't push the button in here. There we go.